Hi everyone, Justin here, and I'm glad to see you back for another chapter in Road Choice Clutch Technical Training. This program is about clutch setup, covering the basic setup steps, dimensional settings, and troubleshooting variances. Let's begin with a look at the setup basics. Clutch setup consists of assuring that certain dimensional settings are correct, and also correcting any variances that are unacceptable. Of course, the clutch is pre-adjusted at the factory for maximum performance and longevity. Any internal adjustment that a mechanic would do is only to compensate for wear. When the clutch is new, there's no wear, so there's no adjustment to be done. What we're talking about here is setup during installation. There are three dimensional settings that need our attention. First is dimension one, the distance between the clutch cover and the release bearing. The recommended range is half inch to five eighths of an inch. At the same time, we need to verify the following conditions. The clutch is mounted on the flywheel per the installation instructions. Caging fork or blocks have been removed. The alignment tool or clutch jack is removed and the transmission is not yet installed. If our checklist isn't 100% correct, we need to troubleshoot a few more details before proceeding. If the dimension one distance is too large, meaning greater than 5 eighths of an inch, we need to know why. And here are some possible causes. The disc is in backwards. The 5 16 inch flywheel dimension is too small and the disc is hitting the crank bolts. The flywheel bore is smaller than the clutch disc or the 14 inch pot flywheel 2.937 inch dimension is not correct. If the dimension one distance is too small or less than half an inch, possible causes could be the flywheel has not been resurfaced. The flywheel clutch centering lip is larger than 3 16 of an inch. Somebody forgot to install a clutch disc or the 14 inch pot flywheel 2.937 inch dimension is not correct. If the dimension one and the conditions are all correct, we can proceed to install the transmission. The second dimension we need to check is the distance between the clutch brake and the release bearing. The recommended range is half inch to nine sixteenths of an inch. At the same time, we need to verify that the clutch is properly installed on the flywheel and the transmission is installed properly. If our checklist isn't correct, we again need to troubleshoot a few variances before proceeding. If dimension two is too large or greater than 9 16 of an inch, possible causes are dimension one is incorrect, the input shaft measurement is too long caused by wear on the input shaft bearing retainer, there's no fiber spacer, or an oversized clutch brake was not used. If dimension two is too small or less than half an inch, possible causes are dimension one is incorrect, an oversized clutch brake was used instead of a standard size, or a fiber spacer was installed but not needed. If dimension two and the conditions are all correct, we can proceed with the installation. The third and final dimension to check is the distance between the fork and the release bearing. The recommended distance here is one eighth of an inch. Note that free travel should only be present on mechanical linkage. Well, as you've just seen, clutch setup is a series of checks and cross checks that lead to logical conclusions. By following this process for every installation, you'll add performance and longevity every time. Well, that's it for this chapter. I hope you'll explore the other chapters in our clutch training series to make sure your clutch knowledge is up to date. You'll find all the parts information you need at roadchoice.com and you can always contact us directly with questions about what you've learned here. This is Justin for Road Choice Truck Parts and I'll see you next time.